Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. Do not forget that Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan 83 Additionally, you can find me on YouTube, simply look for Drew Duncan. And, of course, the Full Court Press is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And, as always, you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Simply take advice to play the Full Court Press by Drew Duncan. Habib is victorious. Over Dustin Poirier unifying the belts and becoming the official lightweight champion. I want to get to a couple of things regarding his comments uh, after the fact. Number one, I want to get to him saying that he is the best pound for pound in the world. I- I'm not going to say no to that. I will say this. This is the frustrating aspect to me of MMA, combat sports, really sports in general, right? When you look at McGregor and Antonio Brown, just as a couple of for instances, right? They understand the social media world and they know exactly how to market themselves. And they do so to a point that everything that they do automatically goes up to trending and they are consistently holding the world in the palm of their hand. Right. Whether we like how they do it or not, the fact of the matter is, is they understand the game and they know how to play it. And that what they are doing is they are creating a life for themselves through these marketing strategies for life after sports. You're not going to be an athlete forever. I know that it's hard to say that right now with Tom Brady being freaking 42 years old and still doing the damn thing. But even Tom Brady's not going to be an athlete forever. Okay. It catches up to all of us eventually. And McGregor and Brown and a host of others are preparing themselves for that because they understand what it's going to take for after days when they're not athletes. Now, here's a scenario. Because of what they do, it almost gets lost in translation who they are in their respective sports. And even then, McGregor has been very good in his sport, right? A double champ two different weight classes. Um, He's fought of who's who in MMA, had the the Floyd Mayweather thing happen. And, of course, we all know what Antonio Bryant is on a football field. Here's the thing. They're doing a very good job at bringing attention to themselves, but like Coach Gruden said, this is not about just one guy. And basically what he was alluding to is, and matter of fact, this is exactly what he said right here when he said, look, we weren't just going to drop back and throw it to one guy. You know, and he even talked about having 53 players on this roster. And yeah, sure, a lot of things help when you can game plan around a guy like an Antonio Brown. That helps take a lot of pressure off of your other receivers and quarterbacks and offensive linemen because, you know, they're having to adjust their coverages for a guy like him that makes the run game a little bit easier. You can use the pass to get to the run and vice versa. You can really start mixing up the play calling. It does all those things. But unlike football, MMA is a sport that is just you and the person that is across from you. Think about it like this. Habib fought on a card that was headlined by Conor McGregor and Eddie Alvarez. That night, Conor McGregor TKO'd Eddie Alvarez. Think about it like this as well. Habib beat Michael Johnson that night. In fact, if we go back to about, oh, roughly some of the last fights he's had since 2013, Thiago Tavares, Rafael Dos Anjos, Michael Johnson, Edson Barbosa, Conor McGregor, and Dustin Poirier are all names that Habib has beat. The thing about it was, it wasn't just the promotion and how he promoted himself like McGregor did outside of the octagon. It was how he won fights with TKOs. And a lot of people viewed the wrestling aspect as being boring. Let's just admit it, because a lot of times people didn't know what they were saying. Okay, let's just be fair about that. But I think through Habib, the world has become educated. Because I would attend Bellator fights, UFC fights. I'm getting ready to go to LFA coming up this weekend. I've covered EFC here locally in Wichita, Kansas. I've called fights. A lot of times when we see the ground game happen, we would hear boos. But Alex McGowan, a kid that won here at EFC about a month and a half ago or so, um, is actually getting ready to fight at LFA coming up in Wichita. Um, 
won by submission and spent a good majority of his fight on the ground. And the crowd did not boo. They did not boo because Habib has made that style of MMA relevant. Now, you can point to Brock Lesnar. You can point to Chech Congo. Um, you can point to some other guys if you want, but Habib has made it relevant. And what bothers me is what it took for Habib to get the respect that he now has. It wasn't until he beat McGregor that he really got the respect. And look, McGregor had finally come across the right one. He'd come across with somebody that wasn't going to play his games, that wasn't going to be all over social media. You know, he showed up to the press conference on time. McGregor was running late. A lot of people think it's part of his head games. He said, dude, I'm not doing this with this guy. And he just got up and he walked away. None of this stuff was bothering him. And it was the first time in my career, other than when he fought Floyd Mayweather, that I had actually, well, I guess you could say in, in strictly an MMA setting, that I had predicted that McGregor was going to lose. He had found the right guy in Habib. And it bothered me that Habib was getting no recognition. It took all that madness for him to get some damn notoriety, which I thought was really a bunch of nonsense. Habib has deserved respect for a very long time in this sport now. Is he the best pound for pound? Well, when he fights Tony Ferguson, which looks like it's finally about to happen, Will, look, a long time ago, Tony Ferguson was trying to fight Conor McGregor. He wanted to unify the belts. Ferguson said he'd been saving his best material for this guy. And what happens? McGregor decides he's going to run off and fight Floyd Mayweather. Ferguson's been waiting for this type of stage for a very long time. I cannot wait to see this fight. This would be a badass fight because that's the other aspect of what I wanted to get into. When he said Ferguson deserves next, he's absolutely right. Why? Because everybody wants to know if he's going to fight McGregor again. Look, you look at Ferguson's record and you look at McGregor's record, guys, it's two different. Right now, Ferguson and Habib are the two guys in that division. I've said for a long time that part of the problem with Ronda Rousey was they just allowed her to come back and go ahead and fight for a title after losing it and then taking time off, and then she came back and you got to fight for a championship. I thought it was bad for the UFC. I thought it was bad for Ronda Rousey. I think the fans needed to see her win a couple of fights, work her way back up, and say, you know what, she's come back, she's won some fights, she's done it in dramatic fashion, she deserves a shot, and then fought whoever it was, which probably would be Amanda Nunes, the way she's running through the competition right now. And I think the buildup would have been far more massive. McGregor should not just be allowed, especially given all the stuff that's happened outside of the octagon, to just come back and fight for a title. I know that's what he wants. After the fight, he said, book my rematch in Russia. It's not the way that it is anymore with McGregor. He doesn't run things before or, you know, the way now that he did before, period. It's just not the way it is anymore. And Habib as champion, I think, is doing the right thing, and that's giving the next best guy the opportunity. I know that it doesn't look good, especially what happened with Donald, you know, Cerrone, if I remember correctly, right, the eye thing, and then he tried to blow snot out of his nose, and, you know, his eye just swelled up, and so they weren't going to let him fight. I mean, that that's crappy for the fans. It's crappy for Ferguson. It's crappy for the UFC. It's the way things go, but... Tony Ferguson does deserve it. I actually interviewed Tony Ferguson a couple of years ago. He was 21-0 at that time, if I remember correctly. One of the things that he talked about was how nobody wanted to say his name. Nobody wanted to say Ferguson's name. Well, Habib's willing to. Habib is willing to say your name, call you out, and let's get it on. Respect. Respect is earned and not deserved, and Habib has definitely earned it. I'm not saying McGregor was a bad fighter or is a bad fighter. I'm not saying that um, he hasn't accomplished a lot in the UFC and took the UFC to a height that we may never see again. What I am saying is that the promoter's job is to promote these fighters so that way they don't have to do this craziness in order to get to where other people should be 
in life. Remember, Habib in that victory did not make as much as McGregor in that loss. And that's saying a lot, guys. I am Drew Duncan, host of the Full Court Press. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan 83. Additionally, you can find me on YouTube. Simply look for Drew Duncan. The Full Court Press is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Look for us wherever you listen to podcasts. And as always, don't you dare touch that dial.